Uh, our turn three is a computer game, Grand Strategy. Uh, World War Two. It's about uh, well, uh, fighting anti World War Two as any country. There's a lot of things that are new in Hot Try and Free. Um, we've been redesigning pretty much every feature to make it better and more realistic and more fun for the player. Um, well, first, I mean, we have like the unit system is uh, revised so that uh, instead of like single units being moved around, we have unit hierarchies where there's like divisions, corps, arms, etc., all tied together. And anyone on the one level is, uh, um, in, is leaders on one level, uh, impacts the ones on lower levels, and uh, different, uh, and different orders. If you're giving an order on an army, it will be translating that order to its corps and then to its divisions automatically. Helping out other stuff that's a cool. I mean, we got a huge big map that we're rather proud of. It's bigger than anything else in the game before. Uh, we have a new intelligence system, new politics, new diplomatic, new, 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 new. Well, yeah, well, there's so much new things. I could talk about them in detail for a fill your entire tape. <laughs> yeah, you could basically just do that to tell the Western Front to like attack Paris, don't worry about it, and let the AI do that. Hopefully, that will work out fine and be uh, good in the game. But, um, or you may be. <laughs> You may be wanting to play like, okay, I don't really care about the nitty gritty military details. I like playing around with the technology and the diplomatic. I want to focus on the military. Uh, what we're also trying to do is like, if you only want to focus on the military, we want to be able to like turn off uh, uh, or let the AI handle the diplomatics or let the AI handle the intelligence. The one with the military was. Uh, an original idea I had a long time ago that I wanted to have like this huge uh, military ordering system that I had this idea for years and years talking about. Uh, the stuff like to, uh, to uh, enable uh, or disable other aspects of the game and let the AI run it was um, something one of the programmers said when we were talking about uh, uh, what can we do to make the game easier to learn? And he said, well, can it be, since we're doing this with the AI, we're running the AI anyway for the player, we could just have switches for that, and it should be an option. You can play like the Grand Strategy Command if you want to, and then you can still play around as uh, Hitler did and give an uh, order to a specific level division just because you can. Uh, or half of the programmers on the team are working 100% on the AI, so uh, yes, we're aware that the AI is the core and everything that the game will succeed upon. If you're just giving it on the top theater, on the Western Front or Eastern Front, it's very, very broad uh, order, so you say attack or defend. But if you're like on an army level, it might be like, okay, this army group has uh, uh, this part of the front, they're standing in Belgium, it might be like, uh, uh, hold Mons, attack towards Brussels, or uh, defend uh, the line of uh, Bastogne, or like encircle Bastogne, or attack head on to Bastogne, then that army group will like position its uh, armies to do that kind of encirclements or flanking maneuvers or so. Yeah, that's the, that's the goal of the, that system is that, uh, and one thing we really want to do with that system is that um, the more armies you have in a province, the more likely they are to be picked up by radio. And if you have like headquarters, it's also more likely to pick up. So you could do like fainting maneuvers, like let's say you're playing Britain and you want to invade the Germany in 1944. You may like move some headquarters and some armies to like uh, Dover to convince the Germans that you have massing troops there so that you can that they're so that you're invading against Calais like they did in, in other time uh, in, in the real world um, while just keeping a few uh, divisions without headquarters in uh, in 
Baltic, where was it? In south of England to attack towards Normandy, that the Germans doesn't pick up because they're thinking the attack is towards Calais. So you can do those feints and like, okay, um, and the Russians will try to hide their divisions that are reserved for Stalingrad so that they're not picked up by uh, intelligence and so on. So you get all those secret. Uh, it's kind of like, do, can you hide an army or not? And then you have like technologies like, okay, if you're researching radio technologies, your troops will actually perform better in battle, but uh, radio also increases this uh, signal your troops give up. Because the more radio and stuff you use, the more likely people will pick up that there's a unit there. So it's, it's all those kind of like intricate with the intelligence system. And I mean, warfare is not just attacking your enemy and crushing him, it's also about fooling your enemy and making him weaker. So, um, deception, etc. So, it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, what's it called? People do not like change. Yeah. That's human nature. So, um, but our new engine is more flexible and has more power and makes uh, it easier to develop the, the good games. And still, there's a lot more people playing those games than the old ones. So, th that's that's both the good and the bad with our games is that people play them for a long, long time, <laughs> which is good because. Then they play for a long time. <laughs> well, but that's good. That's a good thing, really, because uh, they're make, they're playing these uh, games, and uh, they want to play good games. So you just have to make, uh, you just have to make a good game, and then you will buy it. <laughs>